They are good southern recipes that I have collected through the years, and um, some of them are mine, some of them belong to friends, and wherever I've used someone else's recipe, they have credit for it. But um, they're easy. They're, they're for someone who works, or perhaps a new bride, or someone who's just tired of cooking the same thing every day. So there are lots of neat recipes in here that, that uh, make you feel like you're a gourmet, whether you are or not. <laughs> so it's neat. So you don't have to be a gourmet no, to enjoy this. No, no. One thing that I wanted to stress uh, with my cookbook is that people don't prepare to be a cook. I mean, you just sort of go in the kitchen and, and let it all hang out. <laughs> if it works, fine. If it doesn't, fine. But if you just go in and, and realize it's a great experience, enjoy it you'll enjoy cooking a whole lot better, and, and this encourages you to do that. It's your attitude then. You need to go in with a positive attitude yes, you do. thinking you can do it. Yes, you do, and you can adjust any recipe, and it was years before I relaxed enough in the kitchen to do that, you know, and I just decided I could take a recipe and make it mine, and I would enjoy it better, and you do. You You're really, really not a natural? I mean, was it hard at first for you? Oh, no, I enjoyed cooking. Unfortunately, I, I love to eat, and I love to cook, too. <laughs> But um, I think you need to learn to relax in the kitchen. People become intimidated by a strange recipe that has a long list of ingredients. And you don't have to have a lot of ingredients to be a good cook. Okay. You really don't. Don't think it's a job. It can be fun. It can be a lot of you fun. You know, something I really liked in the very beginning here, a quotation. I love this. It says, we may live without friends. We may live without books. But civilized men cannot live without cooks. Edward Bulwer Lytton said this. I like that. I have a, a lot of neat um, quotations in the book because I think humor should be in the kitchen as well because when you have a flop, what can you do but laugh? You know. <laughs> right. Now, where did you get the recipes from? From people, from books, uh, from just experimenting in the kitchen. Uh, it's a conglomeration, really. Um, I would like to mention that I have a 75-year-old friend who is a part-time uh, uh, artist, and she wanted to do my cover, and I was delighted to let her do it, and I uh, am a frustrated artist, and I did the illustrations inside. Uh, so, Multi-talented. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but multi-fun, <laughs> anyway. I like the title, too. It's a catchy title. How did you come you. up with that? Is that your original? Well, it was an inspiration, yes. It just came. It was just there. So mm -hmm. I decided to use that and I, everybody seems to like it. So okay. I'm happy with it. Now Mary, you have something for us today. Yes, I do. Baked filet fish recipe. Yes. Uh, I'm originally from the coast, so uh, needless to say I enjoy seafood. And uh, there's so many things you can do with it. I have some flounder fillets this morning. You can use any kind of filleted fish. Uh, king mackerel is delicious done this way. King mackerel steak. I like King Mackerel. All you do is to line uh, your broiler pan with foil, and then you salt and pepper your fish after you put it down, skin side down, on the broiler. And you can omit the salt if you would like. Um, we're also conscious of cholesterol and salt and fats, and um, so you can do that to your own discretion. I want to mention, Mary, that you originally lived in Chacoanity? Yes, Chacoanity. So good morning, Chocolate. That's right. Here's <laughs> to the old hometown, folks. <laughs> That's uh, a nice area. This has a dry white wine in mayonnaise. Now, we've used a half a cup of mayonnaise, and I'm going to put two tablespoons of dry white wine in this okay. and mix it up to begin with. You need to be careful, depending on your brand of mayonnaise, as to how thick it is. So you, do, you want to make a coating. What we're actually going to do is to bake this fish inside a coating of the mayonnaise, and it will almost steam inside. But you will not fry it. You will not add more fat. Now, I have a nice little whisk at home, and I forgot to bring it, so this is a little bit off. <laughs> oh, you're doing a good job of this, um, though. So you, you want to use a thicker mayonnaise? You don't want to make your, your coating too thin. You don't want it to run off your fish. You want it to stay on there. So it will actually coat your fish. Okay. Now, all we're going to do now is just spread this on and seal it. Be sure that it's sealed around the edges so it will form this airtight seal. Mary, you said you have how many children? 
Five. Five. Yes. So I know they've enjoyed your cooking through the years. Well, you know, and they're good cooks, too. I don't oh, have they're... a kid that's not a good cook. Aww. We've had many, many happy hours in the kitchen. I was telling uh, Betty Hodges um, from the Durham News Herald, Morning Herald, um, when I was in Chacoinity and working for the state, um, we got paid once a month. So I bought groceries once a month. Uh -huh. Now, if you think that's not a deal, you try that sometime. <laughs> I planned my main use for a month at the time. Did you? I bought powdered milk, so we didn't even have to go back for milk. Um, wow, well, once a month has to, we it's have hard. to really stretch it out. It's hard, it? but the five kids and I would, would line up, we'd form an assembly line, and I would make meat loaves or whatever, you know, uh, on my menu for that particular day ahead and freeze them and everything was done we'd come home in the afternoon because I was working and um, so they all pitched in yeah uh, when my husband passed away you know mama was a breadwinner so it was it was a real assembly line from the bank right on down <laughs> to the table <laughs> I but know they learned a lot now okay this point it, this doesn't look real pretty like this but it will be beautiful believe me now I have no doubt, Mary. Your next ingredient, and this browns beautifully in the oven. You want to preheat your oven to 350. I'm going to take just a pinch of sherbel, which is a lovely sherbel, sherbel okay. which is a lovely herb to use on seafood, and you crush it a little. When you have dried uh, herbs, you want to release the flavor, so you crush it a little, yeah. and just sprinkle it over your fish, and this adds a little color as well. Mm-hmm. Chervil. I've never used chervil. Do you use it quite a bit? In the yes, kitchen? I love it with um, with scallops too. I have a wonderful recipe for um, scallops on shish kebab with a marinade, and it, oh, it's delicious. Sounds delicious. Okay, now we'll sprinkle a little paprika. Okay. The added color. It's going to be pretty. baked fish can look very bland because it's it's white like this, and the, I, I appeal means so much as far as enjoyment of your food. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. Rita's Digest years ago did a test and changed the colors of food and gave two sets of people the same food, but one group had weird colored food. They all got ill, and the other ones that ate exactly the same thing did not. So I feel <laughs> has a lot it's to mental, do with it. It's mental, huh? It is. All right. Okay. This is the way we do it. We put it in a 350 oven and bake it for 30 minutes. That's not bad. And then you take it out and serve it with two vegetables and or a salad and one vegetable, and you have a wonderful meal. And we're all set. You're all set. And look, here's the finished product here, and it is pretty. really is. Looks nice. Now, your book, getting back to your book, Mary, yes. where can people get this? We're going to place the book locally, um, but you can order it from me at my address. All right. And I believe you have that. Yes, and there we have an address. Cookbook, 2 Beach Trail, Durham, North Carolina, 27705. And we do have the recipe in this book, yes. as well as so many other recipes. But isn't that pretty? It looks delicious. Thank you. Could I taste it? Yes, you may. <laughs> Please. Let's see. I just want to Let see. Let me wash off this. Or not see, but uh, taste how this this is. Believe me, it is yummy. Okay, I'll just get a little pinch here on the end. Now, this is cold, but I have a feeling I'm still going to enjoy it. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, that is good. Great. Mm. Great. It's, it's a yummy Mary. recipe, and it's different. Very good. Now, is this your first cookbook, by the way? Yes, it is, but I have many more little children back in my brain that I hope will emerge soon. Well, good, and Thank please you. let us know when you do and come Thank back and you. visit. Thank you. It would be my pleasure. All right. Mary Elks. She's author of Mary's Incredible Edibles. And once again, you can order it. Cookbook, Two Beach Trail, Durham, North Carolina, 27705. And let's see, a copy is what? 1095. There 1095. are almost 300 pages in it, and it's chock-a-block with good food. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Cindy. Mary Elks. Mary's Incredible Edibles. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment.